for the single person, why is it so important to, to, to view life or for the pursuit of that one thing? What's, what's, what's uniquely single about that? What's uniquely single, I, uh, why well, I think one of the things we talked about were functional saviors, okay. functional heavens, functional hells. And uh, essentially, the, the thinking behind that, and it's not something I've come up with, um, it's something that I've, I've read about and I found very helpful, and, and we've talked about it. Like yeah. the devil aware of it, yeah. And um, the, the, the thing is, we oftentimes fear something, um, and so that for us is that thing that we don't like is the equivalent of a hell. Mm -hmm. And we think this would be great. This would make my life complete. This would satisfy me. That's the equivalent of heaven. And the functional savior is the means whereby you avoid this one and apprehend this one. Okay. So, so one example uh, would be if if to me hell is being alone, then heaven is having lots of people or a specific person mm -hmm. around. So the 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 functional savior would then be either a boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, or a group of friends that we always go out and do stuff together. It's, or, or to be, even, even if it's, I'm all alone and I'm in a crowd of people who are also alone, but we're all alone together, like in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. um, that becomes a savior to me. And so I look to that thing or that person to bring me to my fulfillment. And so that, that would be one that, um, again, everyone would struggle with that. But for the single person, they're not, um, the, the married person has already discovered that that's not true. Mm. Like the spouse doesn't answer the problem. Sure. Um, the single person can look at marriage as being the promised land that can bring that about. Certainly. Okay. So that, that's why specifically for singleness, I think that particular application of that universal problem um, is, um, it, 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 it is so um, applicable or relevant. Okay. Um, and and so you can go on and on down the list of other things. So um, for for one person, um, their 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 biggest fear is not having control, being powerless. So they will then seek after being able to order their life and control their life and master their destiny. And so what they will then do is they will pursue something that will bring them control, hmm. whether it's um, a promotion at work and so they're working harder and harder that they can be above people, whether it's getting money sure. or whether it's um, you know, controlling people through um, uh, men controlling women through, through um, having sex with them and, and dominating that way and conquering hmm. or women controlling men through dressing seductively to conquer the men. Sure. Uh, so, Functional saviors. The answer is that there is only one savior that can bring us to a real heaven, which satisfies the longing in all of these false heavens, these functional heavens mm. that we pursue. Mm. Yeah, I find that a very helpful way of, of understanding, um, because in, in Christian circles, you know, people say, "Oh, don't be guilty of idolatry, this or that," and it seems so contra, um, you know, so. Like a whole different world, yeah. you know, and we think, oh, certainly, well, well, tick, I'm not an adulterer. Yeah, I don't have one of these, <laughs> and I bow down to, oh, great idol of whoever you are, Beethoven, could be Bach, I don't or know. Bach, some, some composer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but in, in a sense that, that, yes, that we do have these things that, that rescue us, yeah. and that they come to our aid, and that, that we hope for, and conversely, when they let us down, yes. it's... It's like, you know, the prophets of Baal, when they saw that their God couldn't save them, mm. just the despair that they felt. Yes. Um, it can be something that we feel when, let's say, the hope for a spouse, you know, for, for, for years, we're hoping for the spouse to come and to save us from the hell of, of singleness. And as you said, those of us that are married, we know that as great as our spouses are, they are they're not able to ultimately... Um, fulfill everything that we're hoping that's right and and you know our own sinfulness is brought into the equation as well and it's not the promised land mm. that we had um, caricatured it to be yeah, yeah exactly exactly and I think that's that's um, every false hope has an illusion of fulfillment 
and and so it, it's pursued and then when it lets you down either there is that defeat or there's a stronger pursuit mm. further mm. Um, and so in the, the ultimately this we're, we're teaching through Ecclesiastes right now uh, and what I love about Ecclesiastes is Solomon um, is writing and he had a, he had achieved everything I mean if it was relationships he wanted 700 wives 300 concubines he could be very picky about women mm. like choose the color choose the hair color the size of shit, shit everything um, he could be very picky about what he wanted he had all this money he can all just buy it all. and so him having apprehended every worldly goal yeah could say at the end, you know what, it's meaningless. We, on the flip side, who have not yet apprehended, elevated, and if we seem to achieve it, we think, I must not have fully achieved mm. it, I need to push a little harder. Yeah. And so this is, um, in the realm of singleness, again, a universal problem, but in the realm of singleness, this tends to show itself in, in relationship and career pursuits, primarily. Okay.